All right, so at the top of your fresh page notes, it says who is or who was Marco Polo. All right. When answering, this is, a, this is actually more like a workshop. This is more like a like a how-to today. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna demonstrate how to answer a checkpoint with a paragraph and basically guaranteeing that you won't not won't can't plagiarize. Does that sound like something that we, we might benefit from? Okay. So we're gonna answer this one together. So I gave everybody green for it. Oh, you're going to earn it. We're going to earn this today working together, all right? We're turning checkpoint one. Instead of like you working on your own, we're turning it into a workshop. Sound good? Yeah, okay. Sure. So first thing, step one. Put this down. Step one. Like, And you can put a title over that if you want, like how to answer a checkpoint paragraph response without plagiarizing. However you want to do it. Step one. What's the question? Who was, where is okay, so step one is identify the question. Know the question. For checkpoint one, it was who was Marco Polo. So step one, identify what is it that you're going to be looking for, right? What are you looking for when you look at the resources? I want you to know what the question is before you look at the resources. Does that make sense? That way you know what you're looking for. Here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to open up where you answer it. You know that document where you actually put in the answer? Don't open that. Because this question is in the document set, I think, every time. Is it not? The first two it has been, right? Like, hey, what's the supporting question? That's the one that you're going to answer. Okay? Do not, why do I say don't open it? Because you guys have been trained to answer it. You start answering right away. In fact, you look at the question so you know what to look for. You ignore anything else that won't be the answer to that question, which forces you to copy paste or to find the answer in the resources and maybe put your own spin on it, right? Have you guys been told to, to uh, what's the term? You're not quoting, you're paraphrasing? Yes. Okay? So when you paraphrase someone else's answer as your answer, that is still plagiarism. If you've been taught different, you've been taught wrong. Understand? So these steps, I'm going to teach you the right way to do this, or at least a right way to do this. So what did I say step one was? Okay, so we're identifying the question. That is part of the documents. I want you to have that in mind. Okay? Step two. Read and or watch the resources. Consume, actually use those words, consume the resources. Remember on every checkpoint it says resources for you or resources for everyone, right? Consume the resources. Your mind is hungry. Feed it. So step two is consume the resources, consume the information. Step three, sleep. Step three is to sleep. I don't mean, oh, I just finished going through it, I still have 10 minutes in class, I'm going to take a nap. No, I don't mean that. I mean that night, after you have consumed the information, the resources, you're going to sleep. You will sleep before you answer the question. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. You're going to consume the information. In order to digest new information, 
Re research proves that you must sleep. Have you ever heard that before? No. Okay, well, I'm telling you. Research proves that to lock things into your memory, you need sleep. So step three is sleep. Now, that next day, and by the way, I always give you enough time to do these steps, which is why it annoys me when I just gave you a checkpoint and you're already answering it 20 minutes in. Okay? So step three is sleep. Step four, the next day, or a couple days later, if you have time, without any resources. Step four, without any resources, you're going to brainstorm. What was step one? How did I put it? Two was? Consume Sleep. resources. Sleep. Sleep. Four? Brainstorm. What? In other words, you're having to recall important details that will answer the question. So you wake up that next day, and sometime during that day, you're going to revisit the question. Probably when you come back to class, right? You revisit the question, and from memory, you recall details that would help you answer that question. So I'm going to have you right now, maybe off to the side or on the back side of the other page that you have right there, I want you to come up with two, three, four things about Marco Polo, the things that you remember about Marco Polo that you learned. Right now, don't look at somebody else. Don't ask them, what do you remember, important or interesting, maybe things that you thought were interesting, important or interesting things you remember about Marco Polo. Right now, we're brainstorming. Because we've already done step one, two, and three. You haven't slept for the past two weeks? Nope. Because we consumed the resources, what, like a week, week and a half ago, at least? All right, shh. Three, four. If you can think of five, who cool. think of five? Has everybody gotten at least two down? Yeah. Okay. All right. Give me the ones you think are the most important. We'll start there, okay? And then we'll keep going after going down. Name? Bristol. Bristol. Marco Bottom Bristol. Yeah. We'll go. Marco Polo was born in 1264. Twelve fifty four? Yeah. Thirteenth century. Early fourteenth, mm -hmm. right? Go. He had a wife and three daughters. Okay. Go. He was a Vietnam explorer that explored Europe. 
Venetian. Venetian. Venetian? He was from Venice. You're, you're, you're not the only one. Somebody else said Vietnam too. Venice. So he was Venetian. I, I, I'm not the best speller, okay? If you're from Venice, you're Venetian. I don't know if that's how you spell that. Yes? Um, he was known from a book he was in? Known for a book. No, how, how about we say known for a book of his exploits? Yeah. You guys know what that means, his exploits? Yeah. What does that mean? Somebody explain what, what that means when I say his exploits. Like what he did. What he did. Yeah. What he did. Where did he go? Yeah. Who, did he, who did he know? Those adventures he went on. Those are his exploits. Absolutely. Good. What else? Told many stories. Okay. Go. Worked for a Chinese emperor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For a while, right? He worked for Chinese emperor. What else? Jail. Jailed for what? Uh, going to Europe or something. For war with. He was jailed by his enemy, right? They captured him and they put him in jail. Who was they? Uh, it starts with G. It does. Gen. Gen Genoa. Genoa. No. Wow. Okay. So, Venice and Genoa went to war for a while, right? Yes. Um, he was a merchant. He was a merchant. And a merchant is someone who does what with stuff? Buys and sells, trades. Yeah. Go. And he went on his first journey when he was seventeen. Seventeen years old. On departure. And how many years was he gone? 24 years. 24 years or was it 17 years? 17. I'm not sure. I've been hearing from kids all day 17, but maybe they're confusing with the age. So I don't know. Is it 17 years of traveling? He was in a certain spot for 17 years, but he was traveling different borders. Ah, okay, good. All right, so 24 years traveling. So he would have gotten back in his, what, 30s, 40s, early 40s? I can't do math. I'm not a math teacher. Okay, cool. So early 40s, that's still pretty young. So he, he was able to come back, and the book's probably already published. And so he, he, he was famous while he was alive, right? Yeah. What else? What else did you put down? Um, the popular book he had was printed in a few languages, and like sold. Uh, we have something about the book. Uh, uh, what, like four or five different languages? Yeah, French and Latin. Okay, so I'll put different languages printed in. What else? What else do you remember about Marco Polo? Go. When he died, people kept asking him to admit that his book was fiction. So he wasn't believed, not entirely at least, right? He wasn't believed. People were like, dude, just, just, you can tell us. You can tell us. You made that up, right? Yeah. Anything else? That's a pretty good list. All right, so we're going to work off this list. If we remember things later, we can still add that, okay? But I wanted to, the brainstorming piece is important. So these are things with the question in mind that we think might help us define who was Marco Polo. Now, do I need to put all of these things into my answer. Yeah, no. 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 Can I answer who was Marco Polo with just a few of these things? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I, remember, I don't want a novel. I want a paragraph. Three, five sentences, somewhere in there. Give or take, right? So, step four is done. Step five. Answer the question.
So the brainstorming, we've thought of all these things. Now is the tricky part. You have to answer the question without using any of those directly. Then Barr's like, wait, what? Here's why. You're going to answer the question, and these will be your support. These will be the pieces of evidence. These will be the defense of your answer. The answer to your question is also known as the blank statement. Starts with a T in writing. Thesis. Thesis. The thesis statement. The answer to the question will be your thesis statement. It might only be one sentence. It might be two tops. Usually it's like two tops. Yes? You guys have written thesis statements before, right? Another way to think of the answer is it's your point. What is the point you're trying to make about Marco Polo? It's a little more abstract, a little less concrete. Think about this. The brainstorming process here, these things are concrete. These are facts you pulled from a resource, yes? Yes, no. yes they're facts you remember. You weren't using the resource, right, while you were brainstorming, but you remembered them from a resource. Yes, you learned it somewhere. This is concrete. Your thesis statement probably will be at least a little more abstract. You're thinking deeper. I want you... I want you to think on another level. We call it higher order thinking, y'all. Hot. Higher order thinking. I want you to elevate your thinking. Who was Marco Polo, really? That's why I want you to think about it. Like, what impact? What lasting legacy? Who was he really? Maybe who is he to us now? You're thinking of your angle on the question. How are you going to answer that question? Think about it right now. What's the point you want to make about Marco Polo? How do you feel about it? Who do you think he was? Real. Yes, we know he was a traveler. Yes, we know all these facts about him, but who was he? You've got to figure out how you're going to answer that question. Just think. How do you want to answer it? Higher order. Higher order thinking. had a family. Was the fact that he had a family, is that what made him like famous? Is that like a, is that, is that almost like a trivia note? Yeah. It's not even really a supporting piece of information, is it? It's kind of supporting. Could you get creative? Could you get creative? Since nobody else volunteered anything, could you get creative and answer, you know what? Marco Polo was a family man.
You know what? I'm going to call them MP because we're poor pals. If I can spell P. P. Marco Polo was a family man. Did we just make a statement? Yes, sir. Okay. Nobody else volunteered anything. Jesse, did you have something? Uh, yeah. He uh, served for Penn State. Okay. Yeah, we have that. Those details. Let's, let's, let's go with this one. Answer the question. We've answered the question. Step six. Put this in your notes. Step six. So step five, answer the question. We just took a stab at it. Marco Polo was a family man. Did he have a family? Yes. Does having a family in and of itself make you a family man? No. 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 Okay. So... So I'm going to throw that out there. I like this. I didn't at first because I didn't know where to go with it. But I think we can go somewhere with it if you want to. Six, what do we do with step six? We just answered. What do you think we're going to do in step six? Here. Uh, read. Read. Nope. We are still not going to look back at our resources. Go. Uh, connected to other facts. So what are we doing with the facts? I just told you that Marco Polo was a family man. What should you say? Support. Support. Prove it. Yep. Prove. Um, what did I say over here? Prove, justify, explain. In step six, you got to prove it, or justify it, or explain it. You made a statement. Now back it up. So we're going to look over here to the things that we brainstormed, and we're going to find something over there that proves that he was a family man. Is there anything over there where we brainstormed facts about Marco Polo, that proves or that can support our statement that Marco Polo was a family man. Yeah. Go. He had a wife and three kids. Okay, he had a wife and three kids. Um, um, to talk. Talk. What else? I was going to say maybe because he uh, went to, he went, when he was 17, he went on a journey with his family. He so traveled with his family. Being a family man doesn't mean just your nuclear family, does it? Can't being a family man also mean you do business with your family, like you're in business with your family? Yeah. Absolutely. Why not? Why can't it? Prove me wrong, right? We're trying to prove our statement right. So he had wife and three kids. Cool. We, we might use that. We might not need to, but we might use that. Uh, where was it? He traveled with his family. Can we put that up here? Traveling with his, what, his dad and a couple uncles or something? We'll, we'll just say with his family, okay? Or with family members. We can, we can clean up how we want to use that later, but we, we're going to probably use that. Now, So he traveled with his family for what purpose? Making money. Okay, so if we are a family of merchants, finding new trade routes, new things to trade so that you can be profitable and make it, how do you support your family? Whatever your trade is. Well, the polos just happen to be merchants. They went traveling because he's a family man. He wants to take care of his family. His family's business is doing trade stuff. Can we see a path where we could answer this question with this answer? Okay, let's continue that. you got to have that step. Like, okay, is this, is this going anywhere? So just because Remy put this out, because she was the only one that put out an answer, do we have to stay with it? No. 
If you throw out a thesis statement, y'all, if we're on step five, answer the question, and we answer it with this, and then we look and like, how are we going to defend this answer? If we can't, or if we can't figure out how to do that, what do we do? Go back to step five. How do I answer this question? Because that answer didn't work. Can we make this one work? Okay, so how? If you think you have a, que uh, a sentence, think of a sentence, anybody. Think of a sentence that you could write that would defend Marco Polo was a family man using either something about him being a merchant or having you know, a wife and three kids or traveling with his family, his, his father and uncles. Yeah. My proof, my proof is that he went and spent 24 years traveling with his family. If you're not a family man, do you think you'd be able to stand traveling with your family for 24 years? No. 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 Uh, I, mean, I mean, I could. Maybe. I, mean, I could not. He traveled with his family for 24 years. Why? Peter, why? Because he, he loves his family. Okay, so, so he loves his family, yeah. We, we established, we, we, our point was that he's a family man. Why did they travel together for 24 years? To make money for his family. So they traveled with his family for 24 years to support the family, back at home. The family business. The family business is how the family supports themselves. Marco Polo was a family man. He traveled with his family for 24 years to support the family business. What else? What was the business? Did, did we even mention what the business is yet? So what was he traveling for? Okay. So among other things, right? So the travel enabled the discovery of what? Silk. Well, I already knew silk was out there. What is a silk an example of? Silk No, it's a resource. It's, it's something that can be traded. It's a commodity. Remember the word commodity? Anything that can be bought, sold, traded? So the traveling enabled the discovery of new, and how do you get to those things? Trade routes. So enabled the discovery of new trade routes and items, commodities. Do you think they might have seen some new things that they would be interested in? Do you think maybe along their travels they found some new things like, man, you know, so-and-so back home would really pay good money for this. We'll take a couple of those. So when we get back, we can sell them for a profit. Right? Yep. So Marco Polo is a family man. He traveled with his family for 24 years to support the family business. The travel enabled the discovery of new trade routes and items, commodities, to be traded for profit. That's the whole point. This, was he successful? Yes. Okay. The success of his travels, how do we know his travels were successful? Because he became a merchant. He was a merchant. Where did he tell about his, in his, his books, exploits? In his books. His book. So the success of his travels told of in the book 
What was the book's name? Whatever it's called. First period called The Adventures of Marco Polo. I'm like, what? And then some people call it The Million Lies or whatever. Okay. So notice I don't say his book, right? Rusticello wrote it, but I mean, it is kind of his book, isn't it? I mean, he's the one that's telling Rusticello what to write down, right? So anyway, the, the success of his travels told of in the book that we, by the way, we had that over here, right? Known for his book of his exploits, right? So again, we're still pulling from our brainstorming. Um, allowed him to do what? He got back and he did what? He was able to, to have a family and support them. So in his young age, after that, in his young age, he was able to go do these adventurous things, make a name for himself, become wealthy, so that, because he's a, you're saying he's a family man, all of those things were motivated by his desire to settle down and have a family. Settle down, marry, and have children. All right, let's read it. Marco Polo was a family man. That's our, that's our statement. That's our answer. Literally a one, two, three, four, five, six word sentence is answering the question. And then we support it by saying, well, he traveled with his family for 24 years to support the family business. Is that somewhat convincing that he's a family man? The travel enabled the discovery of new trade routes and the items, commodities to be traded for uh, profit. The success of his travels, told of in the book, allowed him to settle down, marry, and have children because he's a family man. All right, listen. The point of this, did we answer who was Marco Polo? Yes. yes. No, not kind of. We, did. we made a statement. And we were able to back it up with evidence from the resources. This is a green. As a class, you all just got a green. Why am I wrong? Can you, can you prove me wrong? Did we answer the question? Yes. Did we back it up with uh, resources? Did we use our resources at all after initially consuming no, the information? No. no. Is there any way that could have been plagiarized? No. no. I don't know that anybody has ever answered that question that way before. Not like maybe not even close. I don't know. I know. I said before. Do you see how this process will keep you from plagiarizing? Because you're not have you don't have the resource right in front of me, right in front of you, and you've slept on it. You've given it enough time that you don't remember exactly what it says, but you remember the information. So you brainstorm to put the information down. So you have the, the raw information, not how it was given. You have the raw information. I'm telling you, if you don't have this in your notes, you need to put it in your notes right now. But it's not done yet. So step one, identify the problem. It's kind of like a scientific method, right? Identify the problem. Two, consume resources. This is a lot like a scientific method. Don't you do research on what other people have already found, right? Yeah. So right now we're kind of sticking with that. Step three, sleep on it. Let that information digest and absorb into your brain. Step four, next day, brainstorm without using the resources, just what you remember. If you don't remember, it's probably not important. Or you did a lousy job going through and reading and studying the materials. Step five, you answer the question. It might be a very simple answer. Okay? Answer the question. And then you're going to prove, justify, explain in step six, which we have done now. What would step seven be, do you think, Jake? Sleep. 
Well, you, you, if you have time, you might might be another day. What would come after? Request what after feedback. we just did this? What? Request feedback. No. Tickle what? Tickle. What? Read over. Read over it. Self check. Shh. You're gonna self check. You're going to see if the computer put a little squiggly line under any of your words. You're going to make sure you put a, a period at the end of your sentences or if it's a, if, you know, proper punctuation, capitalizing the things the way you want. If you abbreviate it like this, I'd probably go back and spell out Marco Polo, right? Oh, I certainly would capitalize the P in Polo because it's his last name. Many of you didn't. I did. Shh, yeah. Um, so you do a self-check. Step eight. Request feedback. No! Oh my god. Please. Do you see how do you see how eager he is? And you all are to get done with it? I just want to, I just want to be done with it. Even though I've told you you should do what before you turn in? Self-check and then self-check again. Request. Be smart. Uh, chat with what do I call that? Starts with a P. Peer check. What? What is that? Peer review. Peer review. What are your peers? My parents. The people here. Classmates. Your classmates. Now, listen very carefully. You're not listening carefully if, if you're talking. Listen very carefully. Do not. Do not let someone else peer review read your work if they are not also done with their rough draft. Why? Even if they don't know they're doing it. Let me give you an example from today, myself, first period. First period, we did this process. Third period, I'm, I'm talking with the group and I, I start to lead them. And guess what happens? Third period starts to look a lot like first periods. I was plagiarizing, third period was plagiarizing first period. I didn't even notice it happened until halfway through. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm plagiarizing first period. Why? Because I was now the resource, and we had me out. Does that make sense? No. Yes. Was I? Did I just help write something first period? And and now during the writing process, those thoughts are still in my head and fresh, right? They're fresh. But did you do it for us? No. I was very intentional. I'm, I'm like, you guys, I, even if I wanted to help, did you guys see how long the pause was? No. Yeah. I said, answer the question. And I'm waiting. And I'm waiting. You guys looking around like, is he going to say anything? I didn't want to answer the question. I didn't want to lead you. I thought you were just giving time to think. I was. Okay. Sometimes it's hard to do. It's hard to just let the silence be silent. Okay? Shh. So, don't. Don't um, give someone the opportunity to subconsciously, they might not be doing it on purpose, don't give them an idea that then they write basically the same thing you wrote. So do not have someone peer review you until they are also done with their rough draft. And then you can peer review each other's work. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, when you are peer reviewing, you are checking to make sure that A, they answered the question. Kind of important, right? Don't just check it for spelling. The computer can do that. First and foremost, you're checking to see, did they answer the question? Whether you get it right away or not, you might be like, what do you mean? Is oh, keep reading. <coughs> keep reading. So did they answer it? And then did they support that answer from information from the resources? Okay. What's step nine? Request feedback. I swear, if it's not request feedback. It's not request feedback. Fix mistake. Rewrite if necessary. Oh my god. Isn't that self-checked? You you know what? You you could absolutely at the end of, of step seven or step eight, you would be making those 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 fixes. Can I make as many steps as I want to? Can I subdivide things? Sure. Yeah. Yes. So, so yeah, I could just, if you've already put it on your paper, you don't have to erase it, but I could do that because, so fix. Fix. Or rewrite. Mm -hmm. Step nine. I thought step nine was rewrite. It better be true. It 
could be. I'm saying it could be. I see. So then the next step for you would be 10. I'm just saying you could do the fixes or rewrites at the end of the self check for the peer review, too. Request feedback. So you think it's request feedback? Who thinks it's request feedback? Oh, me! Shh! Hold up, hold up. Let me think. Let's think. Let's think. Let's think. Put your hands in. Let's think. Is there anything else no. that we should do no. before we hit that another request? Another peer review. Another peer review. Yeah, sleep. No. Rewrite it all over the Hold, hold up. It's, it's actually, I'm not going to put it up here. You might put it in your own notes. It is actually a very, very good idea to sleep and then take another look at it. How many times have you ever written something and then you turn it in and the next day you're like, oh man, I should have, right? Right? So, yeah, it's, Jake, you're right. Sleep, Jake, man. you're right. I said sleep. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I said sleep for you. And then it's for much feedback. Double check. I, I'd be like a triple check at this point, right? I said sleep at step four. What's step ten? Request feedback. Submit.